Yesterday, the country passed a painful 9-11 milestone, 12 years since the attack, but today marks another dubious anniversary, September 12th. That's the day we woke up to a different world, a world where the Patriot Act, digital surveillance, and secret data collection programs routinely bend our individual liberties in the name of national security. It's a trend that's continued now for over a decade. This week, for example, we learned the NSA reportedly shares raw intelligence data with Israel, data which likely includes phone calls and emails of American citizens. That's according to yet another document provided to The Guardian by whistleblower Edward Snowden. Again, privacy tested in the name of counterterrorism. The leaders of the city that 12 years ago today was still clouded in dust and debris. They remain unapologetic about that kind of trade-off. Just months after the Twin Towers fell, a new anti-terrorism program was born within the New York City Police Department. The idea was to turn plainclothes cop into intelligence agents to keep a close eye on the city's Muslim communities and mosques. But the authors of a new book argue that the controversial unit fell short when it mattered most. When the would-be subway bomber Naji Bullah Zazi, carrying a detonator and explosives, drove a rental car, car across the George Washington Bridge and into Manhattan. I sat down with Pulitzer Prize-winning reporters Adam Goldman and Matt Apuzo, authors of Enemies Within, inside the NYPD's secret spying unit and Bin Laden's final plot against America, to talk about what really changed after 9-11. It was really staggering to us to see the scope of these, uh, these really intrusive uh, domestic surveillance programs that were built at the NYPD with, with help from the CIA to really keep track of all aspects of Muslim life in New York. And, and they were designed specifically to catch somebody like Zazi, a homegrown, uh, radicalized, al-Qaeda-trained uh, guy from Queens who wants to blow up the subway. And when it mattered most, the, the programs didn't work. I want to get a response from the NYPD Police Commissioner uh, Ray Kelly. Uh, he is not a fan of your work, uh, a Pulitzer Prize uh, notwithstanding. Uh, he says your book is full of half-truths, and he was just doing what he had to do after 9-11. Our sin is to have the temerity, the chutzpah, to go into the federal government's uh, territory of counterterrorism and trying to protect uh, of this city by supplementing what the federal government uh, has done. Uh, your response. Well, you know, um, Kelly has tried to make this a, um, a turf battle between the FBI and the NYPD Intelligence Division. The truth is, is you know, the, the book is, is heavily footnoted. Um, we're, we're publishing internal NYPD documents, uh, many, you know, many of the ones we've obtained. Um, this is really about uh, what we've created in America after 9-11. It's not a question of what's legal. Um, like the NSA programs we've created, everybody knows we changed the law. Everybody knows we, we have a Patriot Act now. What we're looking at is post 9-11, what was built with these new authorities? What kind of surveillance are we accepting in our cities from a municipal police department post 9-11? And we want to let people decide whether they want that and whether it's useful and whether it's, it's worth paying for. And whether or not it works. Uh, Adam, tell us, how many of the surveillance programs that the government has, either the NYPD or the federal government, uh, were effective in catching Zazi? We know the tip about Zazi first came from British intelligence, uh, but then the NSA did get involved. That's correct. They were up, uh, the NSA was up on this particular al-Qaeda email using, in fact, what we know today is called a PRISM, um, tracking the emails of uh, you know, terrorist suspects. And then uh, the FBI was able to identify his two co-conspirators from the travel records because they all flew together to Peshawar on the same flight. So it didn't take the FBI long um, to figure out um, who, Zazi was, uh, who Zazi was plotting this with. So do you think the new surveillance programs are needed or are or not. I don't know about that, but you know, given the amount of time we spent on the book and the people we interviewed, um, agency bureau, um, you know, they can they concede that you know, in this particular instance, they didn't need Prism to stop Zazi because they could have used traditional FISA authorities to just to get up on this Yahoo account. I mean, this was an account of a known Al Qaeda um, terrorist, and um, because they had the travel records, they didn't need the bulk phone records. They knew that these two individuals from Flushing, Queens, had flown to Bashar with Zazi himself. And I think there's a question here about we know this from both pre and post 9/11. Sometimes too much information can stop uh, the law enforcement that, that, that is needed. All these individuals in the NYPD focusing on where every Muslim in the city is, which tea rooms are playing Al Jazeera, uh, you know, which shawarma tastes the best. And ultimately, they're wasting their time. They're not picking anything up. Well, Adam Goldman, Matt Apuzo, the book is Enemies Within. Best of luck with it, and congratulations on the Pulitzer Prize. Thanks.